Uh, welcome to the new live stream from the London School of English. Today we have a very exciting topic uh, um, to cover, which is how to be polite in English and particularly in business English. Uh, we'll share useful expressions and also help you with some English grammar points uh, so that you sound more diplomatic. And uh, before we get into material, I, I just wanted to mention that you can improve your English, including business and professional English, um, in our classes led, led by expert English language trainers, either face-to-face -face in London or in virtual uh, group classes online. So do consider checking our website uh, www.londonschool.com to learn more about different courses that we offer. And now, without further ado, let me introduce two of my colleagues uh, whom uh, you might already know, uh, both Linda Stott, our expert English language trainer, and Faiza Afsal from our client services team have participated in the live streams uh, before, and uh, they've got a lot of uh, material um, with you to share. Uh, the main uh, section of uh, the live stream would be led by uh, Linda, and then uh, all of us uh, will join uh, at the Q&A session at the end. So uh, do write your questions uh, and comments uh, in the live chat next to the video as we uh, go through the material. And uh, Linda, Pfizer, welcome to the live stream. Really good to uh, have you back, both of yeah. you. It's Thank you so back. much, Olga. Yeah, good to good see to everyone. Back. Yeah. Yeah. And, Familiar uh, names. And, so looking yeah. forward to today. Yeah. And uh, also really good to see uh, people joining us. So we have uh, Frank Kuntz, uh, who's saying hello from Hi, Frank. Uh, Leckenburg. A regular, Hi, a loyal uh, supporter. Really yeah, <laughs> definitely. And yeah. Uh, alumni as well. So uh, one of our alumni. And uh, we've got uh, Gaku Seito 7. Hello. And uh, we have uh, who, uh, Karen Garcia. Hi, from Panama. From Panama. Wow. And uh, we've got uh, Muriel Guzman from Mexico. Really, uh, really great uh, to have uh, Hola. people joining. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure that there are more uh, people joining as well. So hello, everyone. And just because uh, we've got quite a lot of material uh, today to cover, let's uh, dive straight in. And then uh, we'll find you uh, at the Q&A session at the end uh, after Linda covered the most, most of the material. So Linda, over to you. Thank you so much. So I'm just going to wait for Olga to um, post up a um, a uh, image for us. Um, and what it is is it's from a, a very interesting uh, book, um, and the book is called the How to Be British uh, collection. And this is a picture from the front cover of the book, and it's a collection written by Martin Ford and Peter Legan. So my question to you is, what's your first impression when you see this uh, picture? Do you think this is true? So on the left, it says, number one, wrong, person shouting help, and there's a lifeboat, and the gentleman is just walking past. And in the second picture, which says it's the right way to be, uh, the person's uh, shouting, excuse me, sir, I'm terribly sorry to bother you, but I wonder if you would mind helping me a moment as long as it's no trouble, of course, and immediately the English gentleman reaches for the life belt and uh, uh, throws it to the gentleman in the water. So do you think this is true? Uh, would you say this is true of British culture? What's your first impression? So it's interesting because I've shown this picture to clients before, and some of them think that this uh, picture is actually true. So I just wanted to quickly show you, here's the little book, and it's filled with lots of very interesting, uh, funny images about British culture. Um, but yes, I showed it to a client once, and and, and he said, oh, wow, that's terrible. You know, that's, um, whew, that means that if I get into trouble, uh, I won't be helped. Well, it's interesting because it isn't true, of course, but what the authors have done is they've taken a humorous approach to highlight how important um, polite and diplomatic language is in British culture. So what's also interesting about this picture is that it also highlights how important humor is in our culture. 
as well as this, the ability to laugh at ourselves, uh, to not take ourselves too seriously. And in the exaggeration of the situation, because it's an exaggerated situation, it becomes clear that, of course, we will help you if you are in a difficult situation and you don't use diplomatic language or polite language. However, in business and life in general, using polite and diplomatic language will certainly help you to forge new relationships to build good rapport and generally have much easier and smoother uh, relations. So moving on, in previous YouTube videos, we've talked quite a bit about cultural awareness. If you haven't already, you might want to have a look at some of these YouTube videos. We've spoken about how different cultures approach a negotiation, a meeting, etc. And of course, today's topic, how to be polite and diplomatic, we of course also need to consider culture. So I'm just wondering, uh, for those of you that are here, it's lovely to see you all. Um, I'm wondering what would you consider to be impolite and undiplomatic in your culture? So what would you consider to be impolite and undiplomatic in your culture? Something to think about. Is it purely language? Is it spoken words? Or does body language come into it? Are hand gestures important as part of communication? Or are they considered impolite? these hand gestures. Should we consider the tone of our voice? I'd love to hear your thoughts. So please type away and share your thoughts and comments with us next to the video. So as I mentioned earlier, generally speaking in the UK, we value politeness and diplomacy very highly. And it is especially important in English. I mean, in British, in business, sorry. <laughs> All of those things. <laughs> A less direct approach is preferred as it feels less confrontational and personal and rude. So a less direct approach, so an indirect approach is preferred as it feels less confrontational personal and rude. Let's take a look at these uh, sentences. So the first one is, we are unhappy with this proposal. We can't accept it. You said there would be a government subsidy. We won't agree to this. So if you had to look at these four sentences, do you think these sentences are diplomatic and polite? Would you change anything about these sentences? Well, in fact, all four of those sentences are classified as direct, not diplomatic, and not polite. So, well done, Frank. Yes, absolutely. All of them. Fantastic. Well done. So, how could we change the sentences to make them less direct, polite, and diplomatic. Let's have a look at the first sentence. The first one was, we are unhappy with this proposal. We would have to say, I'm sorry, but we're not very happy with this proposal. Remember, we've spoken before that sorry is a very useful softener, especially for bad news. And also note how instead of using the negative unhappy, so the sentence is, we, we are unhappy. So instead of saying unhappy, we say not very happy. It just sounds less uh, confrontational and uh, negative. So the sentence is less direct and therefore polite and diplomatic. I'm sorry, but we're not very happy with this proposal. The second sentence, 
that we looked at is we can't accept it. And here again, unfortunately, we would be unable to accept that. Unfortunately, is another very useful softener, especially when you're giving bad news. And note the use of the modal verb would, helping you to sound much more diplomatic. So the whole expression would be unable to makes this sound polite and diplomatic. The, the next one in this series was you said there would be a government subsidy. Uh, the correct way would be to say we understood that there would be a government subsidy. So I is generally avoided or you is generally avoided and we replace it with we. Uh, you sounds too personal and direct. And of course, it depends on the setting. Are you saying this in a formal or a less formal se setting? So for instance, I might say this to a friend. You, you, you said, um, but I probably wouldn't use it when speaking to colleagues. So if I was speaking to a colleague, I might say, I must have misunderstood you. I thought you said. Can you see it's far more polite, diplomatic, and less confrontational. It feels a bit confrontational when we say, you said da 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 da, -da. Um, So it's must much better and polite to say, I must have misunderstood you. I thought you said. And then the last one in this series was, we won't agree to this. And it probably would be better to say, we would find this somewhat difficult to agree to. The use of somewhat acts again um, as a softener. And we use these softeners quite a lot um, in British English just to sound more polite, um, less direct, and less confrontational. So I'd like to move. Um, I see some more people have, have joined us. Uh, Elisa from Germany. Uh, this is uh, good to hear. We, I'll tackle your comment just now, but it's good to have you with us. Um, so moving on to body language, some cultures rely on body language and hand gestures to communicate, including finger pointing. However, when using English, we tend not to use finger pointing when speaking to someone as this is seen as quite impolite and rude. So as an example, uh, if you were speaking uh, British English, and you said, you don't understand me, you would be seen as quite rude and impolite, and people would probably be a little bit uh, surprised and shocked. And it might be much better to say something like this, perhaps I'm not making myself clear. So we can see it has a whole different feeling about it. Yeah. So another example uh, of this is, you're wrong. Uh, it would be better to say, I don't really agree with you. So we can see we keep the positive uh, agree, uh, rather just say, I don't really agree with you. So in terms of body language, this idea of sitting in a meeting or in a negotiation with folded arms in some cultures, that's quite acceptable. But for us, it's generally a no-no, as this could give the impression that you are closed off uh, to the person you are communicating with. In addition, it might give the impression that you're not interested in the conversation. And that could be really a difficult thing if you're trying to negotiate um, a deal or trying to negotiate a smoother passage uh, for business. So generally speaking, it's probably a good idea to avoid using negative words in order to come across as diplomatic and polite and instead use positive words. So for examples of these are instead of saying, I disagree, which comes across as very negative, rather to say, I don't really agree. Another example of that would be, that's a bad idea probably better to say, I don't think that's such a good idea. And then the last one in this series, uh, that won't work. 
same comes across as very direct and very um, uh, rude. So better to say, I'm not sure that'll work. Yeah. Now, we've spoken in a lot of our YouTube videos about magic words that uh, can help you uh, soften giving bad news. And uh, Olga's very kindly made a nice visual for us of all these words. So we've got sorry, unfortunately, I'm afraid, sorry, but, could you, please, let's look at it again, shall we? Um, but sorry, obviously, is the most uh, commonly uh, used one. So still on the theme of, of body language, um, let's have a look at eye contact. You see, eye contact is really important in our culture. It shows that you have a keen interest in what the other person is saying. By eye contact, I don't mean staring at the person, uh, but ensuring that you meet the gaze of the other person you are speaking to. Be sure to listen and understand the other person. So useful language here might be uh, yes, but I see what you mean, but I agree up to a point, but that's true to a certain extent, but. So usually when we want to give something negative, we give the positive, and then when the but comes, then we know actually there is probably going to be something that the person doesn't agree with you on or that there's some issue. So the positive comes first to create a good, uh, polite, diplomatic feeling. And then afterward, the but is going to follow where the problem sits. So if you want to add to a conversation or you want to interrupt someone, it is considered impolite. Uh, to simply shout out, hey, I've got something to say. It's important to signal using language. We don't, you know, sit there doing that, shaking our hand to get the person's attention. So it's important to signal using language to show that you would like to say something. So these expressions might help you achieve this. Sorry, can I just come in here? Can I just stop you there for a moment? Sorry, could I add something? So these could definitely help you to get attention from the person who's speaking to say that you would like to add something into the meeting or the negotiation or the conversation. <laughs> now, sometimes you'll be speaking and somebody says one of these expressions and you're not quite ready or you're not quite finished with what you've said. If you want to stop someone from interrupting you, these uh, two phrases, two sentences might be useful for you. If I could just finish what I was saying, and usually if you are on the receiving end, you say, yes, yeah, sure, sorry, go ahead. Um, and then the next one is, sorry, hold on, let me finish, please. So this is beautiful, lovely, uh, polite language. We've got the sorry. Uh, breaking bad news that I'm not ready to uh, have you interrupt me. I need to finish. Right. So here are some expressions if you want to clarify what someone is saying. Sorry, I'm not sure what you mean. Could you clarify that for me, please? Sorry, I didn't catch that. What did you say? So as I've mentioned before, Modal verbs could also be useful in sounding more diplomatic and polite. We use modal verbs a lot to help us uh, with diplomacy and politeness. So, for instance, if you were making a request, let's look at the difference between a direct statement and an indirect statement. So I'm going to give you three statements and I'd like to you to type uh, the number of the sentence, which of these are indirect and which are in, uh, which are direct and which are indirect. So the first statement is, I want more time. The second one, I could do with more time. 
And number three, it would be helpful to have more time. So which of these three are direct and which of these three are indirect? I'll give you a few moments to think about it and then just type your number into the comments column and let's see who gets in uh, first. It takes a bit of time for the comments to upload. So if I don't respond, uh, please don't be uh, f alarmed or feel like you, you haven't, you've been ignored. It's just that they take a bit of time to upload. So I'm going to go on because nothing's coming up at the moment. So sentence one is more direct and sentences two and three are less direct or more indirect. Yeah, Karen got it. And uh, Myriel, well done. You got in there. Well done. Um, yes, there you go. Thanks, Olga. Um, so, yes, the one is sentence one is definitely. So, you're starting to get the feeling about how politeness and diplomacy work. Uh, thanks, Marianne. And Yave, um, definitely you get starting to all get this feeling. Good, good. Excellent. So, let's have a look at uh, these. Uh, two sentences when giving someone an order. Give me an answer by tomorrow. Could you give me an answer by tomorrow? So which of these are polite and which of these are impolite? What do you think? I'd love to be giving away money for the correct answers, but um, it's not a game show. <laughs> so... Sentence one, absolutely. Sentence one is extremely rude. And sentence two is much more polite and diplomatic. Good. So moving on, I mentioned earlier about using negative words uh, in an expression and that we need to be careful. Yeah, a lot of people got it right. Yep, two is polite. Absolutely, Ultimus, you have a uh, rad. I'm not sure you said two one, so I'm not quite sure. Uh, anyway, absolutely, the second one is the polite one, and the first one it was uh, impolite. So I mentioned earlier about using negative words in an expression and that we need to be careful using them. So let's look at these two negative modal verbs. The two negative modal verbs are can't and won't. We have to be very careful when we use these. So the two sentences, I can't deliver the products as planned. I won't have the data ready by next week. So these aren't rude, 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 but it would be better to say, I won't be able to deliver the products as planned. And in the second one, I won't have the data ready by next week. I won't be able to have the data ready uh, by next week. We could have you, of course, use unfortunately to soften. So unfortunately, I won't be able to, and unfortunately, I won't be able to have. So we could do that as well. Here are a few more examples of less polite and more polite expressions. So can you, it's not rude, but the use of could is much more polite. Can you, more polite, could you? Can you call me next week is another example. Would you mind calling me next week? is probably much better. And the last sentence in this particular series, can I help you? I was wondering if you could help me. Oh, that's so polite. Doors will open. Everyone will, will bend over backwards to try and help you. Uh, as we illustrated in that image at the beginning of the of the session, which we'll probably show again at the end. So we can see that the use of modal auxiliary verbs are frequently used in English in order to help make the sentence more polite and therefore diplomatic. Remember that modal verbs 
are not used on their own. We need to use them with another main verb. And they are versatile in the meanings that they convey as well as their functions. So let's have a look at the functions of a few modal verbs. Of course, some of these are interchangeable, um, but let's look at the main ones that would, I think might, or hopefully you would find useful. So when you want to request something, you could use, can you please help me with, of course, if you want to sound much more polite, then you would say, could you? Could you please help me with this? Uh, would you like to open the window? Uh, this is if you're requesting. If you want to offer good modal verbs for offering, may I? So may I help you? May can also be used for possibility. So I may see you on Friday or I may come. Uh, still for offering, would. Would you like a cup of tea? Would you like to... Uh, come and see our officers, and shall, shall I help you, is really formal and um, very formal. So uh, probably more common would, but shall is much, much more formal. Um, the function of advising, if you want to advise somebody something, you ought to stay home, or you should stay home, or you had better stay home. Uh, obviously, these are things that we're hearing about during this COVID time, that if you're not feeling well, you, sh you ought to stay home, you should, or you had better stay home. But luckily for us, we're, 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 we might be at home, but we're all working. So the function, the next function is if you want to make a suggestion, you could, could is, is useful, you could try closing your background applications. If you have an issue with your computer, you could try closing your background applications. If you want to invite somebody, we can again use the would. So would you like to come to London? Would you like to take one of our courses, etc.? So listen up, I'm gonna I have a question for you. So there are nine pure or simple modal auxiliary verbs. Do you know what they are? I'm going to ask that question again. There are nine pure or simple modal auxiliary verbs. Do you know what the nine are? So, here is a list of the pure or simple modal auxiliary verbs. So we've got can is number one, could, number two, may, might, must, shall, should, will, and would. These are the nine main ones that we use, the main simple modal auxiliary verbs. So if you use these, you need to remember these important three important points. The nine uh, modal auxiliary, simple uh, modal auxiliary verbs I've just mentioned, they're all followed by the bare infinitive. For example, he must do the report. It's not correct to say he must to do the report because after must, we use the bare infinitive. So in this case, do is the bare infinitive. In the second example, uh, in the second thing you need to remember when using these modal auxiliary verbs, if using the negative, you need to use either the contracted form or the full form. For example, can becomes can't contracted or cannot in its full form. It is not too correct to say, I don't can go. I can't go. I can't meet you tomorrow or I cannot meet you tomorrow. And the third point is these modal verbs have no past form. So it's not correct to say, I musted. ED for the past form. I, so it's not correct to say, I must go. I must go. 
there is a lot more to talk about and uh, discuss in relation to modal verbs. But unfortunately, we won't have time to look at it in more detail in this session. So if you think you might need more help with them, you could sign up for our online self-study course, join a course, or take a look at our blog uh, where you'll find some more detailed information about these really, really, really important modal auxiliary verbs. So I'd like to move on to looking at uh, the pronunciation uh, or a part of pronunciation in relation to politeness. So more specifically, I'm going to look at intonation. Intonation is how your voice goes up and then down when speaking. And intonation is very important in English because it tells the listener how you are feeling. So intonation can tell the listener if the speaker is angry, sad, or if the speaker is being polite. And it's not so much what you say, but how you say it that becomes extremely important in British English in order to maintain this polite diplomatic manner. So a flat intonation without much change in the voice could sound rude or impolite, even if you don't mean it, because perhaps in your culture, it's better to speak on a flat uh, level. So the British Council, here's a tip for you. The British Council give a good example of this. Um, so imagine you're taking a taxi or an Uber or a cab uh, to a business meeting. And you ask the driver if he can take you there. And he replies, yes, yeah, sure, get in. Yes, yeah, sure, get in. However, if he replied, yes, sure, get in, which driver would you feel most comfortable with? Well, of course, it's about culture. But most certainly in England or in the UK or in British English, we would definitely take the second chap and drive in the taxi of the second chap, ensuring that we'd probably have a very pleasant journey because it sounds much more polite and friendly. Another example of intonation is this. I was wondering if you could help me. So we can see the intonation is very flat. I'm wondering if you could help me. But when we vary the intonation, the voice goes up and down. So for instance, I was wondering, if you could help me. So it sounds much more, uh, there's a variation in the intonation. It sounds much more friendly, uh, therefore diplomatic and polite. And we've got this wonderful language that goes with it. I was wondering if you could help me. So if you feel you would like more practice with this, or you want to learn more about intonation, in helping you sound more polite, then visit the British Council website. Uh, I think Olga's got the um, the link to that. It's uh, there you go. Um, so visit the British Council uh, website. There's a thing called Premier Skills English Podcast, and there's a full lesson on there. A beautiful listening with vocabulary about intonation. It's quite difficult to teach. And it's quite difficult to learn, but it's about listening to lots of different uh, podcasts and videos to pick up how this uh, lilt and intonation uh, works. Or you could take a look at uh, BBC podcasts uh, that might help you quite a bit. Alternatively, of course, you could take one of our courses or choose to have uh, a one-to-one -one individual lesson with one of the London School of English's expert trainers. Yeah. So at the beginning of this session, we showed a photo. I don't know. Could we get that back up again, Olga? Um, it was a, there you go. Fantastic. Thank you, Olga. So at the beginning of this session, we showed a photo. Here it is again. Now that we've had a little bit of a closer look at polite and diplomatic language, does the picture make more sense now? Do you understand the uh, image differently than you did in the beginning? And what's your impression now? 
are you feeling a little bit more comfortable about this polite and diplomatic language? So, to sum up, I think we would all agree that one of the most important aspects of business is relationship building, building rapport and trust. And what is also key is the language we use in order to make this possible. In English, using polite and diplomatic language helps to maintain good relationships and to build on new ones. Thank you for your time today and for listening. Uh, over to you, any questions? Great. Thank you very much, Linda. I just want to applaud <laughs> for so all the wonderful advice. Uh -huh, pleasure. <laughs> Uh, it's uh, it's been very interesting to uh, to listen to uh, the live stream, and um, we've got lots of people saying thank you, thank you, Linda. So that's uh, that's great. And uh, uh, Frank, help <laughs> with yeah, a big uh, smile. You. That's lovely. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. And uh, we've got uh, we've got lots of uh, lots of uh, comments and also some questions. And I would okay. like to attend to some of them uh, kind sure. of briefly, but uh, and then. Because uh, we've got Pfizer here on, on the live stream with us, who has experience uh, working and uh, living in different cultures. Uh, so, yeah. she, uh, so it would be really interesting, uh, Pfizer, to hear your take on things, on being polite, uh, impolite, sure. direct, indirect. But let's just uh, uh, look at several comments before uh, before we get to this. Uh, so there was one question from um, from Frank. Um, just a second yes so um so frank is uh, asking uh if we directly use unfortunately i can't uh would it be more or less polite uh that's referring to what you linda said that i can't is is uh, is actually not extremely polite so what's your what's your opinion of that uh, are you asking me or, uh, or yes yeah. yeah yeah um i think you know frank it's a good question because i think there's such a fine line between the uh, certain phrases and expressions where we're bordering on being, uh, you know, sort of not quite rude, but, you know, it's kind of a fine line. And I think we have to think of the context quite a lot. Who are you speaking to? Where are you? Is it a person you've just met, et cetera, et cetera. I think uh, a lot about the 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 context and the environment and the and the situation. So, if I was in a very formal situation, I probably would say, unfortunately, um, it's not going to be possible for me to. You know, I'd be very apologetic. But, however, if I was speaking to a colleague, I might say, unfortunately, I can't, I can't stay and help you this afternoon, and that would feel because it's a colleague. So I think I think you know, and also it might for me it might be about the age or the status of the person. So if the age or the status of the person is higher than me, I would be very mindful of um, my formal formal language. Would you agree with that, Pfizer? Definitely, um, and that kind of Olga's point of you know, I've, if you've worked with people from different cultures as well, sometimes you might have to consider the hierarchy a little bit more. Exactly. Um, I, exactly, as you said, Linda, the context of the situation. Um, what I would also say is is where you are in the conversation also. Absolutely, so if it, yes. If it's at the very really start important. of a conversation, um, then perhaps be a little bit more polite. Mm -hmm. But if it's something that, you know, you've been discussing and had a long conversation about things, then perhaps, um, you can be a little bit more direct, so to speak. Mm. Uh, it, there's also a, a difference if this is being written or if it's being said. Um, yep. Linda, your point about intonation can help. So, you know, if you say, unfortunately, I can't, and then somebody knows, you know, you're not being like, oh, unfortunately, I can't. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a real... Um... Yeah, no, that's not, <laughs> mm, <laughs> that's not what you want to hear. It's a, it's a no-go, yeah. yeah. But it's interesting yeah. because sometimes you hear people say, oh, drop the formality, you know, because mm -hmm. it's been going on, as you say, you know, you, you tend to sort of enter a conversation being much more formal and you sort of feel the water, so to speak. 
is it going to be safe and at what point do i drop the formality and mm. quite often say oh stop being so formal you know come on we've we've been talking now for about 15 minutes um so i think as you say you know be led also by sometimes what other people are doing and yeah. saying and behaving i think but that's what um we said at a, a, another live stream um about taking the cue from yes. the other person it, yeah. it's i tend yeah. to do um yes especially because you know we have clients and partners that come from all over the world and if it's a new relationship i i sort of let them give me Lead the way of whether mm -hmm. the formality yeah. is going to change at all um yeah, yeah. Um, it, that that leads me to a few comments that we received earlier in the live stream about th these big differences that might exist in different countries. So at the beginning of the live stream, um, we had a comment from uh, Alisa in uh, Germany who said that it's completely normal. Uh, uh, so Linda, when uh, when you I think I think that that relates to the examples that you gave at the very beginning. And uh, you mentioned that that would be considered impolite in English. Um, so, Alisa, uh, do comment. Uh, just I'm, I'm laughing. I'm laughing. I'm laughing, no. Alisa, because it's it's um, it's it's really funny. I had a, 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 a German gentleman in a in a course, uh, a, a business course with London School one one year, and he was very direct. And there were a couple of other people in the group that were a little bit offended because culturally they were more used to the sort of polite, less direct way. Mm -hmm. And it was really interesting because it took him a while to get and understand, you know, he said, oh, but we just want to get the job done. We haven't got time to worry about could and would and should and may and might and all these modal verbs and uh, softeners. We don't have time for this. We just want to get the business done. Um, and it was really interesting. And then he started to sort of backpedal. And then eventually by the Friday, because I, 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 pres I presume that his other, um, the other students in the, or the clients in the group must have teased him throughout the week, you know, in a playful way. And by the Friday, he actually came to me and said, I'm, I really must apologize. I see now the error of my ways. <laughs> well, it's, um, it's a bit of an adjustment. And actually, um, Olga, to kind of answer your, your question to me before we got to these questions, because mm -hmm. it's all sort of connected. Uh, I had a little bit of an adjustment when I, um, when I moved from Canada to the UK. And while I had studied in the UK, I hadn't worked. So the, and I'm generalizing here just for, yeah, for sure. simplicity, but the, the language in Canada and in North America tends to be more direct. Uh, the language in the UK tends to be a little bit more indirect. And what I found is I had to be mindful of things like intonation. I had to be mindful of um, adjusting my language just a little bit to not be quite as direct because some people mm -hmm. could see that as rude perhaps. Yeah. But that was also for me... Um, something that I tried to navigate as well to say, you know, I might be using less words when I'm expressing something, but that doesn't mean I'm being rude. If again, if you're thinking about the context, if you're thinking about who you're speaking to, how early you are in the, in the relationship or, or your knowledge of them. Um, but it, but it was something that um, it's helpful to change and adjust because sometimes yeah. um Actually, it's uh, wh what your client was saying. It might actually not get the job done faster if you exactly. say it directly because you might have offended. by mistake offended somebody or they won't be as receptive to what you're Absolutely. saying because mm -hmm. it's it's interpreted in a way that they, they find to be a little bit rude. So mm -hmm. actually taking that extra second to write something um, in a would, could, should, maybe yeah, way yeah, uh, yeah. can be better. Um, I'd also say, for example, there are things I'm mindful of myself that uh, I find it really hard when I see somebody write an email and it just says FISA in my head. <laughs> I, I, I hear it as FISA and I'm like, oh, yeah. okay. But, you know, for some people, that's it's just FISA. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. fine. So I yeah. think it's, it's helpful. Um, to 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 acknowledge your um, interpretation and yeah. and Frank, I, I hear you when you say time is money, but sometimes actually that extra time will get you the money faster. Yeah, yeah. if you say it in a way that's um, 
that's well received and that's yeah. about making those little adjustments it's, yeah. it's not about going into writing essays um but it's it's just about adjusting a little bit if you know for a particular mm -hmm. person it might be better received but if if both people can be direct no problem yeah, and then there's great. also the ad sorry just to mention there's also the added thing that sometimes uh, culture doesn't actually matter. You just get rude people. So. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter how many coulds and shoulds and woulds. Uh, people just are sometimes rude. So bear that in mind as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, I suppose uh, we just have to be more accepting of each other and different cultures and sometimes just, uh, you know, accept that maybe sometimes we can hear someone's got a foreign accent and just go, you know, they probably don't intend this. But let's just move on, to, you know, to, 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 but I mean, obviously it's useful if you can use this polite language. Th that's mm -hmm. where I think, Linda, your point about body language and about intonation, that you can hear it. Yeah. If somebody has an intention that they're trying to be quite forceful with you, you will hear it in how they speak to you. But if you hear somebody or say something in a way that seems quite blunt, but the way they're saying it to you doesn't have any of that kind of, feeling yeah yeah feeling yeah. behind it and then you know it's just how it's been phrased yeah um i'd also say to be mindful of of what channel you're using to communicate so i personally am quite a formal um person in email uh, and on the phone and now with this covid time being on platforms like teams and things like that i sometimes i'm just quite like <laughs> more, more direct than i would ever be in email or phone so uh you can also change it according to the channel so i definitely TV, agree with you very much a chat you might not have time to be like please and thank you you might just be like exactly yeah mm -hmm. when, um, question mark <laughs> exactly yes no maybe <laughs> yeah yes, you're, yes. it's a, a very 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 good point Pfizer. is it depends on also uh, in that's just still answering frank's question it depends on on uh, on the situation and wh where you are, absolutely. Great, thanks, Linda and Faiza. And um, uh, I am actually aware of the time, and unfortunately, uh, we need to be wrapping up quite uh, quite mm. soon. It's just such a big uh, topic, but it's a huge uh, topic. Uh, it's a huge topic, and uh, it was great to hear uh, one of the examples of how our uh, course participants can learn this uh, indirect and more polite language oh, definitely, while visiting yeah. our center, uh, center in London. Uh, but for those people who, uh, for example, uh, who are thinking about uh, taking virtual um, uh, learning English online in virtual group courses that we also offer, uh, do you think that this is something that they can learn uh, as well? Uh, so yeah. this. Um, I would say that's the advantage of the group courses that we have. I mean, um, at the moment we're running both. So we, we are very happy and excited to reopen our center um, and we're just finishing our third week. So we've welcomed our clients back for face-to-face. -face. Uh, but we've also continued to run our virtual courses. Um, and the advantage of being in a group is you have uh, the opportunity to meet people from different nationalities and understand their culture. Uh, but, you know, Linda, your example of your client was a perfect um, demonstration of what you were teaching him in terms yeah. of the language, but what he also learned from his fellow students, because Absolutely. they were able to, to sort of shed light on, you know, if you make that adjustment, it might actually be easier. And, you know, um, you'll learn from your, from your fellow classmates, you'll learn from your trainer. Um, so that's why we, we very much recommend if you can uh, join the group courses. Uh, we we run them in um, general English and business English. We also have specialized legal English courses um, for IELTS exam preparation. Uh, and then uh, we've got a, an English for work and careers course that we're also running, uh, which is for people who have less business experience. Um, we have academic courses like uh, English for University as well. And then obviously all the the face to face courses as well. If you're able to come, if you if you would like to travel. Um, those are all available. Um, Sophia, if you'd like to send us an email at clients at londonschool.com, we can, we can help figure out what um, online course might be suitable for you. So we've got the virtual group ones where you'll be with other course participants. 
Um, we've got uh, one to one if you just want to focus on something you need specifically. And then we also have the courses if you just want to study by yourself with an online platform. So we have a lot of things. Great. Uh, thanks for answering this question. And unfortunately, we do need to wrap up. And uh, I've got a comment from yeah uh, from, from Frank saying that, yes, we definitely need more time yeah. for this kind of topic. Uh, definitely a great topic. Uh, so uh, uh, I just want to say, uh, first of all, thank you to Linda and Pfizer for joining us for this event uh, and uh, sharing their experience and their tips. Uh, uh, it, it's very valuable. And of course, Thank you very much to everyone who joined us yes. for all the comments, yes. all of your questions. Big, uh, big thank you again. Yeah, for thanks to everybody. Uh, and for sharing your time with us uh, here on this live stream. Um, do um, also, uh, if you do, uh, do consider uh, subscribing to our channel uh, if you want to continue improving your English in this way. And of course, check our uh, website at londonschool.com. Uh, we uh, will have a live stream next week at the same time on Thursday, which would actually be uh, on the topic of uh, top uh, five benefits of taking or of learning English online in virtual group uh, classes. So, wow, uh, Sophia, interesting topic. Uh, yeah, Sophia, if you've got uh, the, this question, we we might we will uh, answer uh, this much uh, in much more detail uh then and uh so do subscribe and uh, find out more and uh i i would like to say frank is saying good uh, good evening everyone and hope to see you soon and we'd like to say that uh same to you uh frank and uh to everyone who jo uh, who joined us for this event uh good morning good afternoon good evening good night and uh keep learning english <laughs> <laughs> amazing Thank you, everybody, for listening and watching. Take care. Keep learning. Keep well. Keep safe. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.